Hi, hi, Talia. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you for jumping on right at seven o'clock. We're starting at 7.01. Um, hi, I want to welcome everyone to this live special event brought to you by the Mandel JCC of Greater Hartford. I'm Kathy Binder, and I am broadcasting live from my home here in West Hartford, Connecticut, with my plants behind me. <laughs> We're going to be partying with Talia Pollock, author of the new cookbook, Party in your plants. Woo -woo! We, have, Woo -woo! <laughs> we have so many people joining us from around the country on the Mandel JCC Facebook live stream, from the Presserman JCC and the Schwartz Reisman Center, which is powering a new platform to watch JCC live streams, which is called Virtual JCC. That's virtualjcc.com. You should check it out. Many of you may be watching on that platform and that's great, but for those of you who are new to it, um, it's a fantastic virtual programming available from JCCs around the country and it's all in one place. If you happen to be watching on Facebook, you can type in and ask Talia a question at any point during the party and she will try and get to as many questions as she can. Yeah, please ask questions. So let me tell you a little something about Talia. Talia Pollock is a native of Avon, Connecticut, right here in the greater Hartford area. She graduated from the Mandel JCC preschool right here in West Hartford. Since graduating preschool though, Talia has become an hilarious award-winning podcast host, a stand-up comedian, a plant-based chef, and CEO of the nationally celebrated wellness company, party in my plants. You may have seen her recently on Good Morning America or on Dr. Oz. She's been around. Tonight, <laughs> we're going to inspire us to take the hell out of healthy eating. Talia's cookbook, I have it right here, Party in Your Plants, just hit the scene on April 21st during a pandemic. Woo! <laughs> you can find it on Amazon or wherever you buy your books. Um, tonight, Talia promises to show you how to eat healthy without hating your life, <laughs> how to not be the health nut weirdo at the potluck, and how not to choose between feeling good and feeling happy. I have my kombucha cocktail here, and I'm ready to party. Woo! And I'm thrilled to introduce to you Talia Pollock. Yeah. Take it away, Talia. We should have had some music to get this party started here. Kathy, thank you so much for having me. Everybody, thank you so much for setting this up. Hello on Instagram. I'm falling apart here. Thank you so much for being here. It, it's awesome to connect with you all. Like we said, if you have any questions at any point, Jesse, my, my other half, my husband is here, <laughs> kind of. He's little camera shy right now but uh you know because of this thing he has to be here so we're working on this together so you ask your questions i'll see them i'll answer them and we'll we'll party together so i figured the best way to get started and break the ice so to speak here is to make a cocktail with ice so to speak so i'd love to introduce you to our Bucha Mule. Now, if you've joined one of our live streams before, we've done a couple, I've revealed an embarrassing fact about my husband that he's not a huge fan of reading, which is a little silly because I'm a big fan of writing. And so we've been he's been reading his way through the book based on every recipe that we're cooking together from the book. So if you wouldn't mind, Jesse, will you please read to them uh, yeah. There's a story pretty much in my book for every recipe, and I'll talk to you why that is, why you know why I designed my book that way. We'll get into all that, but I figure we'll kick this right off with a drink, because why not? So, so just in case anyone already has the book, we are on page 155, which is where this Bucha Mule recipe is. See, he's so good. The introduction <laughs> says, Moscow mules are my kind of family's thing. Whenever we go on vacation, you better believe that on one night, you can find my dad unpacking 
his safely undie and sock wrapped copper mugs in our rental house kitchen. True. And to our traveling <laughs> Isn't that obsession. So true. That is true. I have seen it many <laughs> like times. Like it travels with copper mugs. And to our traveling obsession with this gingery drink that is healthified kombucha mule was the signature drink at my wedding. I fully stand behind this being a true crowd pleaser. And considering it's made with great for your gut ginger kombucha and not beer, I can stand by this being a belly pleaser to boot. So, so, to make and it, I, well, okay, so yes. So let's make the drink first and then we'll share every single thing about me, what I stand for, why this even exists. So to get started, we're going to do six ounces of ginger kombucha. Now, let me know in the comments if, oops, if you're bucha people. Oh, yes. Um, if you're bucha people, are you bucha people? Let me know in the comments. Are you, hey, Allison, are you bucha fearful people? Do you know what kombucha is? Um, if you don't know, it's a fermented tea drink that is so good for your gut, but because it's fermented, it's a little fizzy. So it's a perfect substitution for beer because it has that little fizz. So we don't need ginger beer. We got ginger boot. And this is the exact drink that we made at our wedding that was a real big hit yes oh yeah so allison just said my kombucha meal is her fave and it's so funny because in my book um at the end someone brenda said she hasn't tried it brenda i would i would encourage you to give it a go it's an amazing uh combination with alcohol it's a perfect mixer yeah we're okay so you thought you were coming to a health talk right a health person and we're talking alcohol and that is because my whole thing is making healthy eating not suck okay like every time i do a speech i talk at colleges i talk at companies i talk at conferences the first thing i say is raise your hand if you in some way shape or form think that healthy eating kind of sucks and everyone obviously raises their hand because everybody in some way, shape or form does think the healthy eating kind of sucks. And then I say, oh, great. Now my job is to uh, try to convince you that it doesn't. And that's as easy as telling you that jello shots aren't fun. Usually that one that kills it with the with the college crowd The you know, the older people are kind of like. <laughs> so, um, yeah, boot. Yeah, exactly. Is what I call it. Yeah. So. Um, that's my whole thing is making healthy eating, uh, not suck less. So as I go into my story and why that's my ethos and my philosophy and my passion and, uh, what I aim to do with you tonight, let's make this damn cocktail. Shall yes. we? So six ounces of ginger kombucha, please on it, uh, on it. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. And then one shot of vodka per person. Do you want me to grab the vodka? I got it. Okay, we have ice in here and then one and a half teaspoons agave optional. Shall we opt in? Sure. I think we shall opt in. <laughs> so here we go for that. And a mint leaf or lime, oh, we need lime juice, about one lime per person. So while Jesse is doing that, and this is why he's here helping, well, A, because I love him and he is the best, but B, because it's hard to, oh. <laughs> Well, well, we have a hole oh in this God. glass. I've never seen that before. It's leaking. <laughs> okay, let's get a new one. Okay, so while this is happening, this is live, baby. Um, funny enough, I did a Good Morning America segment right here in the kitchen when my book came live because I did launch my book during a pandemic. And we had another oops where I dropped my spoon that I was using to saute. And um, we just kept rolling. We kept rolling with it. So this is this is our new normal. Just this eyeballing is, that. Oh, we're boiling over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hi, everybody. While this is going on, I'm Talia Pollock. Thank you so much for being here. As Kathy said, I'm the author of the brand new book, Party in Your Plants, Party in Your Plants, 100 plus plant-based recipes and problem-solving strategies to help you eat healthier without hating your life. And the whole without hating your life is the most important part of this for me. So I say that I didn't find the plants. <laughs> oh my God, it's on the computer. <laughs> the plants. <laughs> it's a 
stuff happens. Stuff happens. I didn't find the plants. The plants found me. So um, in my high school days, I was really, 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 really struggling with a lot of awful digestive issues. And I sought out every healer under the sun. I went to multiple gastroenterologists, naturopathic doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, acupuncturists, hypnotherapists, chiropractors, literally everybody I could think of. And the most anybody could offer me was you have IBS, right? And in case you don't know, that basically means, hey, we ruled out everything else. And like, yeah, I, I guess your stomach hurts. We don't really know why. We don't really know how to help you, but like, here you go. Here's your life sentence. Have a have a good one. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Someone just said in the chat, the slight chaos of your cooking shows with Jesse is my favorite. <laughs> it is slightly chaotic. Um, and so I had this diagnosis of IBS, which really just means BS, because like I said, it just means really nothing. We ruled out everything else. We don't know how to help you by. And so I was sent off to college with this diagnosis, this crippling digestive distress. My stomach hurt almost every second of every day. I couldn't figure out what foods made it worse, what things made it worse. And, and it just kept getting worse and worse. And so I was going through college and just, you know, when your stomach is all messed up, your, your immune system lives primarily in your gut, right? So when your gut sucks, that affects your entire being. And so I was in college and I was getting odd ear infections. I got, you know, a herpes on my eyebrow. It's and it's kind of it's kind of tricky to be like a vibrant, confident, you know, awesome, ambitious college hi Jenny, my mom, a college student when you're walking around with herpes on your eyebrow. <laughs> I mean, good a uh, good time for you to join. Um, and so, in addition to my digestive issues and my immune issues, all of a sudden, my you know my confidence was in the toilet. My um, energy was non-existent and that led to depression and anxiety. And I was just walking around like the least shiny, least great um, version of myself. And so at the same time, though, I was an aspiring comedian. Along my journey in early college, I discovered this idea, this concept, by way of finding our school paper sprawled out on the floor in front of me. And I figured out that um, a humor call, writing humor is a thing. And I was sitting one day waiting for my class and I looked down and right on the floor in front of me, thank you, Jesse, for keeping us moving. Right on the floor in front of me was a article entitled, Everybody Becomes a Doctor When I Get Sick. And I was like, huh, that's true. So I read the, the piece and it had me laughing the whole time. It had me shaking my head. The guy that wrote it was like completing my thoughts, my sentences. It was like we were having this relationship. And by the end of the article, I just felt so heard and I felt so less alone. And I just, I was like, what is this magic? Because at the time I was studying to be a magazine journalist and all the um, responses on all my papers, the, you know, the teacher kept saying, Talia, you know, basically stick to the facts, <laughs> like stop adding in color. Thank you, Elise, so much. Stick to the facts. Stick to, and, and, and then I read this piece and I was like, wait, you can write things that, that are just thoughts, that are just stories, that are just your own experiences. And in doing so, you can help other people feel less alone and feel less bad about themselves. I'm in. And so I switched my major to television and film because I wanted to go into comedy writing. So I then landed my own humor column. Hey, Nissan. And I started, um, I started writing the humor column and I started putting words to the shared struggles on the college campus. And so this all led me to my junior year abroad in LA where I was studying comedy. I was interning for Adam Sandler's production company, Happy Madison. And in my off time, I was seeking out all the wellness stuff that LA had to offer. So I had my first green juice. I had my first colonic. 
I took my first spin class. None of this was anything I had ever known about before. And through word of mouth, you know, like the spin instructor said, go see this healer. And the colonic lady said, go see this healer. And so I was led to this one person whose thing was to touch different parts of my body and tell me what parasites I had and what supplements I should spend my money on. And I was so desperate. I was so desperate to find a solution to my health issues. So what I, I was checking out and buying all these supplements and I told the woman that uh, I was hungry. And she said, oh my gosh, go across the street. There's this place called Planet Raw. Do you wanna interrupt with the finishing touches here? Our finishing touches? <laughs> well, let me just tell you, I'm sorry for interrupting this wonderful story. <laughs> what we have in here is six ounces, ounces of ginger kombucha, a shot of vodka, juice from one lime, and then we're going to top it off with just a little dash of agave, if you so choose. If and you so I'm choose. gonna grab a little mint leaf, which from is also our a little new garnish, garden. if you so, shall so choose. If you shall so choose. <laughs> Beautiful. If you're just tuning in, you missed the glass crackage that we had just a few moments ago. That was enthralling. Um, I also got some booch under my computer. I'm sorry about that. So we're, while he goes to grab the mint, this is why we need two people here. We're moving along. I left you hanging here. What happened when I was hungry and the receptionist said, go across the street. So she says, go get this coconut smoothie. I say, okay. I go across the street and I order the coconut smoothie and they hand it to me and it's this white creamy frothy thing and I say oh I'm so sorry I can't do dairy because at that time that was the only thing that I knew without um without a doubt like that's a no-go for my my sensitive tummy so I push it back and say I'm sorry I can't do dairy and the employee says um sweetie this is vegan now I had never heard this word before in my life and I just took the smoothie and said, okay, like everything hurts my stomach anyway, I might as well just drink it. And I drank it. And for the first time in over eight years, I just got body, full body chills because I still remember it. Literally, it was clear as day. I consumed something that made me feel good. And I said, what is this vegan thing? What is this plants thing? And I spent my rest of my time in LA, both doing the comedy stuff with Adam Sandler and then learning every single thing I possibly could about plants and about, you know, this, this vegan thing. And, and this was in 2008. So this was before there were podcasts, there was Instagram blogs really. And so I would just sit in Barnes and Noble transcribing healthy cookbooks and learning everything I could about this this way of eating and it was like overnight my health transformed I got that life force back I got that energy and I I was back baby and so I went back to school to finish up my my year because I this was my junior so I saw my senior year and I was at Syracuse which is the opposite of LA. <laughs> it snows through May, which actually happened this year too, but that, you know, that was whatever. Um, and I was, I was there with my, I brought my dehydrator that I had purchased, and my new Vitamix that I, that I purchased with my um, tip money that I had saved in my sock drawer for my first ever job at Coldstone Creamery. And I went back to school like all jacked up on the plants. And so I'm there in my college apartment soaking almonds so I could blend them in my, my blender, strain them, and have almond milk. Because almond milk, um, you couldn't buy it in stores. And I was also in my dorm uh, cracking open coconuts with like a machete, dumping out the water so I could drink coconut water and then scraping out the coconut meat and blending it with uh, soaked cashews to make a vegan ice cream. Now, my peers were out there doing keg stands, <laughs> you know, drinking box wine, being normal college students. Sorry if your parents are college students. Maybe they're not all doing that. But at the time, that was what my peers were doing. And I felt there was absolutely no way I could be healthy and happy. So I withdrew from my sorority. I became what I call a health not hermit. I became so insecure about my way of life. I became a burden to family. 
I became completely insecure about this, this way of being. And it really made me feel that there, that you have to choose. You could either have your health or your happiness because I would go with my family to like Pittsburgh Steelers tailgates and I would be the burden. I would be the weird one. Thanks so much, Elise. I'd be the weird one, you know, asking to go to Whole Foods and, and being, you know, I didn't want to be a burden. So I just would run in and grab the first thing I could see, which was pineapple. So, and I'm just standing in the freezing degree weather at the tailgate eating pineapple because I, I didn't want to eat the tailgate food, but I also didn't want to be a burden. And I graduated college as alone as ever. I had no friends on graduation day. I had no one to sit next to. And I, but I had my health and I, I just set out to figure out how one never has to choose between their health and their happiness. And that is what my entire mission is with party in my plants and my book party in your plants. That's why it says a hundred plus plant-based recipes and problem solving strategies to help you eat healthier without hating your life. Because there was a long period of time where I was eating healthier, but I was kind of hating my life. And let me tell you, stress is not something that plants can override. Okay. So as I was starting, you know, as I was compromising my happiness for my health, guess what? Uh, that unhappiness, that loneliness, that anxiety of being a weird loner, uh, that started hurting my stomach again. Because you really can't, as I say, eat your Brussels with a bitch face. You can't, sorry if there's kids, you can't white knuckle kale. And so if you haven't figured it out, what I ended up doing after I um, graduated college, I went to culinary school to learn how to cook plants. It was a plant-based culinary school. I became a holistic health coach, but I also was still obsessed with comedy. So I would do stand-up all throughout New York City and improv. I worked for David Letterman and College Humor, and I was living this, this double life because the wellness world doesn't exactly match up with the health world. I mean, the comedy world, right? Like wellness, you're going to bed at 10 p.m. after you, you know, meditate and drink your calm tea. It's comedy, you're just getting into the club at 10 p.m., chugging a beer and getting on stage to people with chicken wings. And um, I just, I couldn't figure out which world to choose. And I'll never forget, I did this one show, it was a hot July day. Jesse was there and his mom was actually there too. And which was funny, we bonded uh, right as I was like in the throes of comedy. So like some of our first dates were literally him coming to watch me do comedy. I, the first time he, his mom met my parents <laughs> was at one of my stand-up shows. And so I was, I, it was a hot July night and I was on stage and I was telling all these jokes about, you know, the hardships of being a vegan and, and eating healthfully and all this wellness stuff because that was my stories. And I got all the laughs and it felt so great. And then I got off the stage and another girl came up and she told her jokes about like one night stands and like subway rides of shame and all this stuff. And she got laughs. And I realized I'm not changing anyone with the laughs here. I'm not making a difference. This, these people that are in the audience laughing, they're not going to go out and make a big change in their life. I'm th literally, I'm doing <laughs> literally, okay. Literally, he's standing over there go going like this the entire <laughs> time. We have a lot to cook tonight. Like, I, I literally gonna... prepped the entire dish right, because right. I'm preparing for okay, my talking. Okay. Marriage, am I right, people? Well, I want to have this drink. I live so we're gonna have one more intermission. Did you garnish it to say that the last step is crumbling up a little piece of mint and dropping it in the drink. But you can't really see there, but you can see on the Instagram side. Crumble up. All right. Drop again, it in. Again, this is from page one fifty-five. Crumble up. Drop it in. Uh, our Moscow, our Bucho mules that were at our, our wedding. May I finish my story, story, please? Please finish your story. Nina said classic. Hi, Angel. Wow, tart. Mmm. Very tart. Need more agave? I think I need more agave. I'll give a little splash more. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Welcome to our home. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Okay. So I'm on the stand up scene. Wait, someone said, can we replay that? I think this will be live. Oh, yeah, you'll see. You can replay it. I think later. We'll talk. <laughs> well, you know, I think this is going to be live for you to see. Or anyway, um, 
Okay, so I'm on the stand-up stage. I do this thing. I realize the girl's doing the thing. I'm doing the thing. I'm not changing anyone's lives. And that was the last time I did stand-up because what I realized in that moment is I want to use my passion for humor and my love of comedy to inspire people to make better, healthier, more awesome choices. And so that was when I started Party in My Plants as my way of fusing my, um, my gifts and passions obsession with humor with my life-changing, saving, awesome experience with plants. See, you interrupted right as I was at the climax there. <laughs> so that's that's where Party in My Plants came from. And Party in Your Plants, my book, is, is everything you need to know to do what I say is take the hell out of healthy living. And it's a guide. It is full of stories. Not to brag, but people are saying they've never laughed so much reading a reading a cookbook before. Um, and it's had them LOLing, which obviously is music to my ears. And um, so the whole purpose, my whole my whole jam, is to make eating plants more easily. So before you ask, is this a vegan book? Is am I a vegan? Um, no, this is a eat more plants gin. <laughs> this is, oh, the book is already out. Could we pre-order? The book is already out, baby. It came out April 21st, April 21st. Yes. My recipes are all dairy free. There's a dairy full option if you want to add it, but they're all dairy free. So that's a perfect lead into what we're making tonight. So you heard my story, the creation of party in my plants and party in your plants so now we're gonna zoom out and we're gonna make one of my favorite recipes do you want to just give a little anecdote about this recipe because you say it's well, one I feel of my most on the popular spot, but i will agree that it is one of the best recipes one of the reasons for that i would say is it is well it is very healthy it certainly doesn't taste like health food. Yeah. And I think we've impressed many, many people who swear they hate healthy food when they try this. So another thing about it is you can really customize it based off what you like, what you don't like, your dietary restrictions, anything like that. So have you even told them what we're making here? No, I haven't yet. I'll introduce it myself then. Please, Jesse. What Talia's making is her Greek pasta party salad. Woo! So it's a like pasta salad with all the Greek flavors. And it's a party. And it's a party. And it's great for parties. And it's great for so, parties. So again, like I said, my whole jam is is the, the party is twofold, right? It's I want to make healthy eating for you as fun as a party and as lighthearted and as not sucky as a party, but I also want you to understand and believe and see for yourself how when you eat more plants, your life becomes as awesome as a party. Because when you eat those plants, and my entire philosophy, all I care for you to do, literally, this is the only thing I want for you to do is, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? We're ready. All right. What do I want them to do? Do you know? I have no idea where you're going with this. You know exactly where I'm going with this. I want them to eat more plants than you do. Crap. Crap. And what is crap? Do you remember? Crap is foods with chemicals, refined, artificial, and processed ingredients. Woo, woo. That's true. Taught him well, yep. taught him well. So that is all that I'm here to help you do. That is what this book stands for. That is what I stand for. I just wanna empower you every day, every meal, every week, every snack, every year to just tip the odds in your favor by eating more plants than crap. This is not a restrictive thing. This is not a cutout thing. I don't care what you do in the middle. I don't care. He, can you just scooch over here because I can't see you? He eats meat. I don't eat meat. Whatever. He adds it to some of my recipes. I don't add it to some of my recipes. But as a whole, in our own way, we eat way more plants than we, we do, do crap. Plant. And how do we feel? How do we physically feel? Pretty, a, a pretty dank. Yeah. Pretty excellent. <laughs> 
By the way, I didn't say if anyone has the book and is following so along, this is page 236. And I'm so, going to find the Oh my God, the photo is one of my favorite photos on the book. It, it deserves This is what we're pages. working towards. Mm. Oh yeah. It's so good. So again, as I was saying, what's very nice is- I'll start prepping. If, um, you know, this is a pasta salad. If you don't do gluten, let's say, then you can use another form of pasta. Nowadays they make pasta of anything. They make pasta out of rice. They make rice pasta. There's lentil pasta. Something we do with this a lot that has a good flavor is chickpea pasta. Um, what else? Quinoa pasta I've heard of. So you can put any pasta any you pasta want here. You Whatever want pasta that. works for you. Yes. And then the other thing hobby. is uh, cheese as well. So we're indulging a little bit tonight and using some some real deal feta cheese. But let's uh, let's talk about this. Okay, what were you gonna say? I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna say, but you don't have to use feta cheese. You can use either no da cheese, no cheese dairy or they make dairy free, free cheese. Oh man, they make yeah, back in my day, they made zero dairy-free cheeses, and now they make so many that I go into the store and get overwhelmed with all the options. So sometimes we make it with dairy-free, and sometimes we'll use just really high-quality dairy. If you're going to use dairy, um, go. if you're going to use feta specifically, you want it to be 100% sheep cheese. Avoid cow. Or sheep and goat. Some yes. Are so sheep and in goat. my book, I do talk about, um, just scooch in here. So I, can... I talk about goat and sheep being the only cheeses <laughs> that we use <laughs> because they're, um, and Terry <laughs> pipe in here. If this is any, Oh, hi Alicia. Pipe in. If any of this is incorrect information, please. We have the superstar Terry Walters on the call over here. Um, one of my greatest inspirations who grew up, I grew up with her as my next door neighbor and had the clean eating goddess right behind me this whole time. So that was pretty rad. So anyway, um, sheep and goat are some of the least processed cheeses. The cow, cow is, cow is whack. You've seen the documentaries, right? We don't need to go into that, um, but I just always opt for sheep or goat, and goat is actually lower in lactose. So for us with sensitive tummies, it's much easier on the tummy. And so, yeah, <laughs> um, I was vegan for four years, and listening to my body, I started just incorporating some more things, and um, that's, that's all I want to empower you to do. As long as you eat more plants. Then you do crap. You're good. Yep. All right. What are we putting in this so pasta the first, salad here? Wait, you have to read the intro. Oh, I forgot. Okay. So like I said, there. Okay, wait. We also forgot to explain that it's how the book's divided. That's a huge component. Okay, go ahead. So as you heard, my story stems from this experience of feeling that I had to compromise my happy social life for my healthy life. And that's some BS. That is some B to the S to the for real. And um, that was horrible. And so my whole thing with this book, it's not divided by breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, desserts. Uh-uh. It's divided by real life situations, about, I think about 60 of them. For example. The situation when you'd make this pasta salad. No, I don't know if that's what this one's for. Is it? Yeah, I guess so. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Don't know the book? I thought it was for a potluck. When it's beach day or you're picnicking in the park, Cause you're cute like that. Yeah, you're cute like that. So under that situation, we have a part, a pile in the plant sangria, which we'll be making this weekend. We have a muhammara mayai, which is an a amazing dip. Um, dip with red peppers. And we have what we're making tonight: mm. the Greek pasta salad. Greek pasta salad. So, so Jesse's gonna gonna read the um yeah so like I said it's all divided by you read it I'll plop everything up okay it's all divided by these real life situations because I just so strongly believe you ought to try to fit your plants into your real life not readjust your life to accommodate your plants 
right? That sucks. That's when health eating sucks. When you feel like you're compromising the things that bring you joy, you're compromising um, your social life, you're compromising your free time, you're compromising your bank account, any of this stuff. No, no. The plants are there to support you in thriving the most you can in your real life. And I am just so freaking adamant about helping you do that. And that's why this book is written with stories and with these real life situations to help you just just squeeze them on in like it's no big deal, you know? So the next time, like this weekend, when you're doing, maybe you're doing a socially distant uh, potluck or neighborhood picnic thing or just whatever, you can bring this and now you're eating plants in your real life and you don't look weird or when you didn't go out of your way and it ain't no thing, but you're gonna feel awesome. So. What are we putting in? The first thing we're gonna put in we already cooked the pasta al dente, al dente, al dente, al dente, al dente, according to the package instructions. Shall what I? What about cow cheeses from Family Farms, a locally made things? Terry? I think, <laughs> I, I, I think, well, I'm not the health expert. You are, so I shouldn't answer. I'm not a dairy expert, but I would say in general, anything like really locally made and, you know, not... It, it depends on the cows. It depends if the cows are being pumped with the antibiotics and the crappy diet. So that's really what matters or, you know, the ethics of it, if that's something you care about. But usually these local, thank you, these local farms, Terry, weigh in if I'm wrong. <laughs> She's my go-to. Um, are I give them a thumbs up. I think also it largely depends on the person Quantity. and you should be aware of how you Food makes Well, that's something. a whole other thing that we talk about in the book is – learning to pay attention to how food makes you feel. That's the whole thing, you know? And that's why when people ask me, we're never gonna get to this damn recipe. This is why when people ask me, Talia, how do I get more willpower? You have so much willpower, I don't have any willpower. All I say to them is, listen, when you make the connection between what you eat and how you feel, you don't need willpower because you wanna feel good, right? So you don't wanna eat the stuff that makes you feel bad. So there's no willpower needed when you're making empowered choices just based on how things make you feel. Boom, mic drop. All right. All right. Let on me that. <laughs> you're going to add the pasta to a salad bowl. Done. As you do that, I'm, I love that emoji. I'm going to read the intro to the Greek pasta salad, party salad. This recipe is one of my most prized possessions. After I created it, I was in a similar mental state, I assume, as the person was when they created the clapper because we both had successfully combined two freaking fabulous things, pasta and Greek salad, in my case, light and clapping in Joseph Pidot's case in 1985. So we have history lessons in this book as well. What's extra rad is it is seriously party sized, meaning it makes like 900 portions. And that is fact. It is. <laughs> that is. That is fact. So we wanted to make this tonight um, and we're going to have food for the next week. So far, we've gotten step one done. Great. Step one done. So now we're going to add. We're going to add. Cucumbers. To, where's the spoon you just had? So all we have in the bowl right now is pasta. <coughs> Great. Now we're adding a cucumber. So I already. Oh, sorry. You can't see. I already um, I chopped this because you guys don't need to see my poor knife skills, right? So when you go to culinary school, knife skills is becomes a <laughs> use any pasta you want to. Yes. Um, <laughs> thanks, Christine. When you go to culinary school, um, knife skills and stuff becomes very competitive. And that was not a competition. I won. So, so I just chopped and peeled a cucumber. I peeled it because it was not organic because we're in a pandemic and it's not that easy to always get organic or any fresh food right now. So do what you can. But if it's not organic, you peel, you should peel it, peel it. All right, great. So I mixed in, I'm just gonna tilt you down a hint there so you can actually see the bowl. Great, next step is you add in the tomatoes, please. I'm going to have a sip of the cocktail. We actually have these cool straws i'm would gonna you would you like a straw oh, i'll take a straw cherry tomatoes were already cut who did that right i did this girl did if you have any questions at any time that is very good it's much better with a straw everything's better with a straw what else you got going on? thanks maureen 
Um, again, we are on, thanks, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. We are on page 236, by the way, of my book, Party in Your Plant. Cook in my Greek pasta party salad, if you're just tuning in. And right now in the bowl, we have pasta, we got cucumbers, and we got tomatoes. Next up, olives. A cup of them. Boop. Great. It's gotten really quiet now. When I don't <laughs> talk, it gets quiet. <laughs> that tends to happen. Now I only did half a red onion. The recipe calls for one small or half a large. Well, I guess that's correct. This is my because onion raw course. onion is a little aggressive on the stomach, so we um, I only did half. There you go. Great. Next, bell pepper. You keep stealing my spoon. You may use any bell pepper um, you would like. Any color. I like yellow because there's not a yellow, lot of yellow. Just omit the omit the oh, olives. Oh yeah, it is better with the straw. Right? Yeah. What's up with that? I don't know. It makes it's a like difference. It's like substantially better with the straw. Also, we have these cool, funky reusable straws. I know. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I did something. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. Someone gave. I don't know where we got these. All right, back on track. Um, any alt capers? That's not a bad idea. Yeah, capers are good. Thank you. Great! Wow, that's already looking good, friends. It's we already even looking make the like dressing a dressing yet. What? That's the good part. Oh yeah, I know. Okay, the so something else really that I good. wanted to share about this book because it does take some work to eat much healthier with with prep. What are your tips to save time and have healthy stuff ready to grab? That is a great question, Michelle. When, what do I do to save time? Okay, so as I've been on this book tour and I'm doing all these interviews, I've been like bursting bubbles left and right when I tell people that, hey, actually, like I don't love spending my entire life in the kitchen. You know, I think for a while when I first started eating the plants, the only way to get the plants, like I said, with the almond milk and the coconuts, the only way to do it was to spend my life in the kitchen making the plants. But now, as things have become so much more accessible for most of us, I've realized like I like to just make the plants, eat the plants, and then bounce because I, I'm eating this way. I'm fueling my body this way so I can go out into the world as the best version of myself, as the best writer, business owner, content creator, performer, speaker, wife, doggy mom, you know, person, the best person I can be. So that person doesn't want to spend all hours chilling in the kitchen and cutting things. So my solution, because I also am not a very organized, if you haven't, couldn't tell by um, this production this evening, we're not um, a type personalities up in this house, especially myself. So my philosophy is when I make any, I make many. So if I've gotten my booty in the kitchen, go me, I rock, yes. How about I double whatever I'm making or triple it? Freeze leftovers, fridge leftovers. You know, every time I make anything, that's why I'm such a huge fan of this recipe because it literally makes like eight to 10 servings depending on your, you know. I feel like we could eat this all in one serving. <laughs> um, um, so that will save you so much time because you're just maximizing the time that you're in the kitchen. It's going so much longer. And much to Jesse's, and I write about this in the book, <laughs> this whole philosophy of um, make, make many when you make any, as well as leftovers are the best overs. So I am the queen of leftovers, much to Jesse's dismay. I will literally save like two tablespoons of quinoa. Like he rolls his eyes. He's always like, should I just throw this out? And I'm like, no. Sure. And I find ways to use it all the time. You know, little scraps can add up to big scraps. And then you have a meal. I'm so also sometimes, sorry for interjecting. That's fine. Very impressed by how Talia will take components from different things that originally had nothing to do with each other and throw them together into one bowl. Stress. So I, I feel like that's another nice strategy that you do. That's very sweet. Like what? 
I don't know. You'll just take like the leftover cauliflower from one night and the leftover something from another night, mix it together and then be like, this just needs olive oil and then it's good. And then you make yeah. a good dish out of just throwing together scraps. Five from the seconds. Yes. Leftovers. So the best having overs. staples ready to go like and leftovers. Quinoa in your fridge, it's already cooked, or rice in your fridge, it's already but cooked. But not because you meal prepped. If you want to do that, go on with your bad self. I'm happy for you. I don't do that. I right. don't say, all right, it's Sunday. Let's make all the quinoa. Now, I don't have kids. So listen, you mamas out there, I, I'm speaking from a kidless life right now. So if, if you need to do that, that's awesome. Um, and I'm sure we will uh, revamp our system when we do have kids. But I will say in the book, after most recipes, I have a little section called leftovers are the best overs. And I talk about how you can repurpose this recipe because I really want to encourage you that when you make any, you make many, and then you can just keep reusing and re-eating the leftovers in very different ways. So for this recipe, I say you could eat leftovers over fresh greens or even put some in a wrap, like a lettuce mm. wrap, as a meal. That would be good. Like, how smart is that? That sounds good. All right. Next. Okay. So I'm adding chickpeas now because I'm another philosophy of mine is um, that food should fill you up. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of food filling me up. And the real things that are gonna fill you up are those proteins and those fats. Um, someone just said, I joined late. I miss you. We use for feta cheese. We're actually using sheep milk feta, but you can obviously substitute any non dairy cheese your heart desires or no cheese. Um, so yeah, I'm a big, huge proponent of, um, food filling you up and when it fills you up, then you're not hangry. Yay. Make it and the mule. Um, and so I'm adding chickpeas. So you'll see in a lot of my recipes, like even the Muhammara one, that's just this typical, it's just a typical um, red pepper dip. I add white beans because why not? That's what's going to fill you up. So now you're eating a spread that's not just red peppers, which really aren't going to do much for you. You can um, have it give you more, more, more girth. <laughs> Girth, that is not the right <laughs> usage of that I word. I love that word, and I never use it. Right. I never. So you put any. in the onion. The so olives, this is the looking. Oh, hi, Lisa. Oh. Okay. So I now <laughs> am going to chop up the cheese, toss that uh -huh. in, and then Mary. the last thing will be the dressing. Won't yeah. It? See how easy is this? Very easy. Would you? Who wants to do the dressing? Why don't you walk them through what's in the dressing? I'll chop up the cheese. I thought there was. A thing about the dressing in here, a quote. Maybe that was a different recipe. So I also have in the book a ton of different quotes um, from recipe testers, and they're under a category called healthy eating sucks, but there's a line crossing out the sucks to basically show you healthy eating doesn't suck. Um, and this one for the Greek pasta party salad, the quote is, my fiance, sorry, there's a curse word coming up. I'll just say, I won't say it if there's kids. My fiance, who usually complains about meatless meals, loved it and was complaining about how full he was after when. Yep. Oh, and the, um, the, the Moscow mule recipe has the best quote, which is, by the way, cheers if you've made it at home. The quote for this one, I love it, is my fiance loved it. He said it's the only way he'll drink kombucha. It's not funny. Can I get some laughter from the crowd, please? <laughs> can you get can I get some ha ha's up in the chats, please? Mm. Mm. Okay, if you're just joining, we've made the bucha mule from page 155 with kombucha and oh, the best part. lime juice. <laughs> Thank you, Tori. Thank you. West, hi, Thay, Lindsay. Thank you, everybody. We're getting laughs. I appreciate the laughter. Oh, thank you, please. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Now we are talking. Good. Um, yeah, so Jesse's having a moment over there. <laughs> and I will scoot on back here. All right, what's in the dressing? To the dressing. You read the dressing, and I'm going to prepare. Okay. The dressing you know. is three or four in a blender. garlic. This is still, by the way, my OG blender that I bought with my Coldstone Creamery sock drawer tip money back in 2009. Isn't that cool? 
Shout yeah. out to Vitamix, not sponsored. But, but if it's not broke, don't it. fix it. Yeah, we almost bought one. All right. We're like, that's just the dressing is going to be three or four garlic cloves chopped. Already did it. She already did it. A quarter cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, which is about that. one large lemon juiced. Got the lemon. About to juice it. Five tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Yeah, okay. Yes. Do you want to if you're not so, If you're not so into vinegar, use three tablespoons. I, will, I don't know why I put that in there. I think some recipe testers had said it was, said too, it was too vinegary. One half to two teaspoons of sea salt, depending on your taste. This will, and then she wrote, put a note in here. <laughs> this will vary depending on how much, what kind of cheese you're adding. Start with half a teaspoon, dress the salad, taste, and add more salt as needed. I think that's a good point. Feta cheese does have salt in it. If you're not using any cheese, you're going to need more salt. Yes. Good point. Thank okay. you. Okay. A quarter to a half teaspoon of ground black pepper, more if you prefer more. Two teaspoons of dried oregano and half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. She's going to take all that, blend it together, and drizzle it over this. And then, and then we're going to be feast. good <laughs> good to chow down. Look it. Someone said the salad's going with them this weekend for Memorial Day. That's awesome. That was Enjoy. a quarter cup of, of lime juice. Lemon, you meant? No. Oh, yeah. Lemon. lemon. Garlic. What was the next step? Olive oil. Olive oil is a half a cup of that. And then the apple cider vinegar. I Talia said. Dad, she, my dad just invited himself over this weekend to eat the uh, leftover yeah. salad. <laughs> Love to have you. Um, <laughs> we'll see, Dad. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome anytime. Apple cider vinegar is a, I think, fermented. Yeah, baby. Okay, like kombucha, fermented. Yep. Oh my god. It's meaning god. very good for your gut. It's amazing. I probiotics. drink two tablespoons every single morning. Is that what that means? Probiotics. Yeah, probiotics. It's great for um, alkalining your body. Um, you know, detoxifying. It's it, they Here's say the it's oil. great for um, potentially weight loss. I don't know why I did that. Sorry. Um, the your skin, uh, immune, all stuff. Basically, it's a miracle. Here's the half teaspoon well, of salt. But did we not want a lot because of the cheese? Yeah, that's why I only did a half oh, teaspoon. Got it. Right, thank you. Ground black pepper. Did I do the oil? Yeah, I did it. I poured it in for you. Oh. Oregano. Do you want to do a fresh oregano or don't we have some in our garden? Mom, do we have oregano? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have oregano. I don't think we have enough. Let's, let's okay. do the. Uh, Fine. All right, and this is it, right? Do we do the, well, we didn't do the apple cider vinegar. We did not. How much oregano goes in? I don't know. Oregano is two teaspoons of dried oregano. So when you're buying apple cider vinegar, if you want to make sure um, you're getting the, the, the gut one, the good stuff for the gut, you want to buy it with the mother. It'll say with the mother. The mother is um, what helps you. Yay, Aaron made these spa water this week. Yes, great. Everyone's saying they love apple cider vinegar. Great, yeah, it gets your, oh yeah, it gets your belly going in the right direction, faux show. Okay, may I have a um, tablespoon measurement? Por favor, thank you, please, thank you. Oh, shoot. Count that as two, that's two. This is three, <laughs> that's four. Oh, These God. are, okay, all right, a little messy. That's it. I think we did the whole, yeah. I told right you, now, it's not about you you know, know, taking yourself too seriously. Yep. Then we blend, right? Yeah. Should we re reposition or they can trust? We you know can just what, trust. You know I'm what gonna blending blend this looks really like. quick. You don't need to. We know what blending looks like. So I'd love to answer any questions with the remaining time we have here. Um, this is this is sort of this is sort of the, sort of the whole deal. You know, this, this is this is what we stand for. It's it's. Yeah. We uh, may you I? like you may please thank you. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, that's the, that's the the flavor maker. That's the money maker. That's really the key. And please note, please note the ingredients again. You know, in this recipe, or shall I say, the lack thereof crap, lousy mm -hmm. ingredients 
in this dressing, okay? Also There's nothing that you can't get in every grocery store. That's true you too, can get, you. you. don't need to go to like a specialty health food store no. to get anything in this book. That's one of the best compliments that I'm getting or one of the, you know, a lot of Amazon reviews are saying, oh my gosh, I could make everything because I had everything in my, um, my pantry already or my house already, which is just so amazing. May have missed out what kind of pasta we're using. Uh, we just found, I think, like a, a organic, I love using chickpea pasta that we just, yeah, we more, just did an organic, some organic. Whole wheat pasta today. Yeah. Um, again, the ingredients just in this rest of this dressing is just garlic cloves, lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, sea salt, black pepper, oregano, and olive oil. And that's okay. It. Can I dump this into a more attractive bowl for us to eat out of tonight? Sure. Okay. So as we as we wrap up. I want to thank you all so much for being here. Okay. <laughs> I think the wow okay. right. food okay. porn. Wow! Wow! Okay. Is this I too think, much? Yeah. Not too much. Did I not say that this makes enough? Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this was a bad idea, but we're just committing what to what we do? started. Marriage. Am I right? Okay. That looks great. So. Thank you guys again so much for being here. If you have any questions, please put it in the in the chat. Um, I, I so appreciate you being here. And again, I just want you to remember that the whole point of this, the, the all you need to focus on is just eating more plants than you eat crap. And also, you cannot eat Brussels with a bitch face. You cannot white knuckle your kale and expect to reap the benefits of the plants. Thank you, Jessica. Um, yeah, Tori. Um, you have to have a smile. You cannot. Whoa, what's happening? Jesse. I'm, I'm giving a little, Get a little shot cock. Like oh my God, do you see the freaking kombucha coming out of my computer? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's oh still God, working. What a disaster. Yes. Well, is that a good literally the plant to shot? pasta ratio is in look at that i just took a random spoonful everybody and there's way more plants can you just clean that up yeah there's way more plants than pasta so with that i'm gonna say thank you all so much someone's never watched an instagram live before that's great instagram's gonna shut off in a minute Thank you, beginning to end, that means the world to me. Thank you all so, so much for letting me, sh letting me bring you into my home, share my book, share my really amazing husband um, who claims he doesn't like doing this, but I'm sorry. Are you this fun when you don't like doing something? I don't think so. So- I just like the result. <laughs> Thank you all. Please go buy my book <laughs> wherever books are sold. Hey, Kathy, we're going to call Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Around. Yep. Thank you so much, Natalia. My husband just texted me and said, we have to make that salad this weekend. It's a hit for this weekend. <laughs> so that's why I wanted I made, to make it. I've made the besto pesto pasta, and my family loved it. I know. I you know me that. that. Ian, you modified it. Delicious. Yeah. Hey, like Not a it, I don't like to my tomatoes. So I used fresh tomato and I don't like peas. So I just didn't put them in. Easy. No I'm stress. It. I get to make those. You like it. <laughs> thank you so much. We want to thank you for inspiring us, bringing us joy, and sharing your recipes. During this crazy time of social distancing, we're all trying to connect with one another in any way we can. And tonight you gave us connection and inspiration. So thank you. And be sure to follow Talia on Instagram. I have my very, very sophisticated sign. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and her website all titled, whoops, Party yep. in My Plants. Woo! Thank you so thank much. Thank you to the Prosserman JCC and the Schwartz Reisman Center for supporting this event on your new platform, Virtual JCC, which is fantastic. If you happen to join us late and you want to see what you missed or you want to share this party with others, this evening has been recorded and will be available on the Mandel JCC Facebook page and on their YouTube channel as well as on Virtual JCC. 
You can find this program along with loads of other great content, including fitness classes, kids programs, cooking demos, and more. I wanna thank the Mandel JCC, and special thanks to Michelle Bonner, Kathy Fishman, Jill Ziplo, David Jacobs, and Annie Keith for all you're doing for our communities at this crazy time. But most importantly, thank you again, Talia, for inspiring us, bringing us joy, and making us laugh. Be safe, be well, and get the partying in your plants started. Yes. Good night, everyone. Have a happy Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so everyone. Much.